Welcome to the only video for 6-1, Exponential Growth and Decay. You should be on page 296. I will eventually be doing this, but here is your general equation. Y equals A, B to the X. B is your base, X is your exponent. Pretty, pretty easy to understand. You need to know the difference, though, between growth and decay by looking at an equation. If B is greater than 1, so if the base is bigger than 1, then you're going to get growth. And if the base is between 0 and 1, you're going to get decay. All right? The only thing we're going to do for practice on our own is graphing. And you can use a graphing calculator. I'm going to try not to. Um, and you do need a t-chart. You do need to pick the numbers that I want. And you'll see why later when we eventually start graphing the inverses. But I'll do a couple of these for you. So page 297, numbers 1 through 4. In the middle of the page, we need to say whether or not it represents growth or decay, and then we have to graph the function. So for number one, y equals 4 to the x. My base is 4. 4 is bigger than 1, so this is exponential growth. And I'm going to make a t-chart with x's of negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So now I need to think about my y. So I'm going to start in the middle, right here with 0. 4 to the 0 is 1. 4 to the 1 is 4. And 4 squared is 16. Negative exponents. 4 to the negative 1 is 1 over 4. And 4 to the negative 2 is 1 over 16. I'll do a rough graph. You should be looking at your calculator, but you also need to practice because I think we're going to learn a new vocab word today. So we have a point at 0, 1, 1, 4. I'm not going to graph 2, 16. It's, it's up here. So I get that it's going to go up really fast. I have a point at negative 1, 1 fourth. It's not accurate. You're taking a guess. And negative 2, 1 16th. That's even smaller and getting close to the x-axis. Now, the tricky part is to make a curve that gets close to your x-axis but doesn't touch it, doesn't cross it, doesn't touch it. And that's called your asymptote. You can find the definition on page 256. Oh, sorry, 296. The asymptote, the x-axis here is your asymptote. T-chart goes with graph. It is a growth function. It goes up really steeply, really fast. All right. Let's try number two, because you might be afraid of fractions. y equals 2 thirds, that fraction being raised to the x power. Well, guess what? No tricks here. I have my x, I have my y, I want you to pick negative 2 through 2. So let's start in the middle with 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Easy. 2 thirds to the first power is 2 thirds. 2 thirds squared, square the top, square the bottom. Now, let's see if I can erase this evenly. There we go, 2 thirds. When you go on this side of your 0, 0 comma 1, it's just the reciprocal. So from 2 thirds, I'm going to write 3 halves. And for 4 ninths, I'm going to write 9 fourths. That's what happens when you just raise it to the negative power. You take the reciprocal. So keeping these x's makes this easy. You know, I skipped a step, though. We have to say whether or not it's exponential growth or decay. 2 thirds is between 0 and 1. So this must be exponential decay. All right. Over here, I'll make my x and y axis. And let me try to actually color code this. So let's start with 0, 1. I have a point here. 1, 2 thirds. All right, so it's a little bit below 1. 2, 4 ninths. OK, that's a little less than 2 thirds. Negative 1, though, that's 3 and a half. So that's between 1 and 2. And then finally, negative 2, 9 fourths, that's just above 
2. So it looks like this function is swooping down this way. Again, the tricky part is to get it going down close to the x-axis, but not touching the x-axis, not crossing the x-axis, because the x-axis, again, is the asymptote. Okay, so make sure you use your magic numbers for the x's. You do need a t-chart. It will come in handy the more you're used to making a t-chart. Even if you're using a graphing calculator for help, the better off you will be in a section or two when we start graphing the inverses. Why don't you try numbers three and four? So why don't you do, I'll move this up for you. Why don't you do page 297 numbers three and four right now. Check your answers in the back of the book. Tomorrow we'll go over any graphing that you need to, work on the calculator, and then we're gonna go right into compound interest and we'll do all the word problems that come with that. There will be no video on it. We're just gonna do it in class together, okay?